All right, so I'm working on the tail ends here. And now that I've sharpened them a little bit, I'm looking at how they transition onto the squirrel's arms. So I'm going to go to adjustments and levels. I'm going to play with darkening the midtones. You see how that transitions more nicely already. Try to limit the highlights a little bit because they're a little bright, getting close to solid white, and limit the shadows a little bit because those talons have more pixel content in them than just solid black. They're really actually really pretty. They're like shell. They have greens and blues and purples. Now that I've adjusted the levels, you can see the difference that makes, you know, from that to that. <clears throat> now I can go to my favorite color balance. Take a little bit of that bright yellow out of the lighting. Put a little bit more red in, especially in the sh shadow. And then just to remind you of the third layer adjustment that's helpful, I'll play with hue saturation and just maybe shift the whole hue a little bit off. But I want it shifted off for the hands, but I don't want it shifted off for the fur. So how can I do that? Well, under hue saturation, you have this drop down that says master. Master means that it will affect all the colors. So it's changing the hue by negative three to all the colors. But if I select just the yellows instead of the master, I can change the, the hue, the actual color of just the yellows in that layer. So that though they go a little bit more orange and the fur stays the same. I can also darken the yellows a little bit, which is gonna help. Okay. Now I can start transitioning using my eraser. On both arms there before I start cutting out more fully. My three pixel feather lasso. From the different layers. There's a little black there I don't need. Just on the talon layer, but I've got the, the squirrel's paw behind it to cover it. It's all about the reference you have and what it covers. Okay, now how do we cut the whole thing out? Oh, there's still some more, let's see, of the talent I need to get rid of here. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. So to really clean the outside edges up, on the head, on the body, I have to make sure I have all these internal transitions at least somewhat dealt with. 
because I'm going to merge all those layers together in order to finish it. So do I have everything internal for the feet, the tail? This one little bit here bugs me still. This one little corner. So I'm going to just use my feathered lasso and delete away from that. That must be a little bit in. Oh, there we go. So it feels like the fur is going over the top of that harder edge tail. And the tail still looks a little bit soft, so I'm going to try the sharpening tool. It's got the base here. Oh, that helps a lot. Increases the texture. The contrast just between pixels. Remember, this doesn't actually bring any focus back. It's just... a tool that detects edges and then heightens the contrast between edges. But it can be used too much, like I just did, right there. And it makes everything look kind of too digital. Too much noise. I can do that even on the clone stamp in places where I had a lot of change of opacity on the tail. And I can return to clone stamp and work between those. Got my low opacities bring these two worlds together of the axolotl tail and the spines from the the iguana so it's about subtle transitions that's what we see a lot in the natural world and so it's what makes it more believable when we see it in fantasy Because your clone stamp travels with you, be careful always where you're copying from. And I have to, to re-choose a place to copy from quite often. But then combining the clone stamp with the sharpening tool can be really, really helpful. As long as it's on its own layer, so you're not... hurting existing content. Okay. I sharpen up the edges of my tail a little bit. We want our whole creature to be in pretty sharp detail because we can always take when we put it into a landscape, we can always take a uh, contrast away and we can always soften focus, but we can never sharpen focus back up very easily without risking that digital noise. Now time to put the head on and to figure out these internal edges for the head. Remember this head was a duplicate. So very easy to just erase away from and not worry about losing anything. If I'm on the wrong tool. There we go.
I'm actually only erasing at 50%. It's just such an abrupt change. It looks a lot more severe than that. And my brush is 0% hardness. It's just a smaller brush as I'm cutting out these feathers. Cutting out this arm. And I like using the stylus, especially when doing things like feathers and fur, because it's pressure sensitive. So each stroke has a little bit more character than it would with a mouse. It doesn't make sense to erase that out like that. But inside, internally, it makes sense to use lower opacity, soft edged erasing. Take edges back to where you want them. So I'm going to keep this little group of feathers as something that helps with the transition. They're like shoulder pads. And I'll clone stamp right within the layer, which is not something I usually do, but I just want to build a little bit of green on this side of the feather. So I'm pretty much creating my own feather here. It's by, by clone stamping within the layer itself instead of keeping it on a separate layer. It's still compositing because I'm not creating my own pixels. I'm copying from other pixels, but I'm deciding exactly where to put them. And I can go right back to erasing out. Okay, now if I'm going to have the shoulder pads on this side, let me sharpen this one a little bit. So with a lasso. Then I can duplicate it. This is where copying and pasting helps kind of steal that lump from the head of feathers. Duplicate it onto a new layer. Command T, transform it, flip it horizontally, and move it onto the other shoulder. Just a little bit smaller, a little adjusted, maybe a little warped. We don't want it to be so recognizably the same but to suggest that those feathers are coming on both sides. And then I'm going to tuck it behind the body by moving the layer down. Down through the body, so it's behind that breastplate. And once it's there, you know, it might be a very little thing, but it can help give continuity to the character. He's got that feather, those feathers on both sides. And then I can erase it out a little as it transitions. Make sure the arm is kind of on the inside of it. And I can even play with some dodge on it. So it catches light a little bit differently. Oh, I have my dodge too strong still from the tail. Usually always below 30. All right. About 20 more seconds of this. Any other internal transitions? In about 10 seconds. And then the next video, I'll merge it all together and I'll clean up the outside.